Well, this narrative, which has been developing at all levels of government, has spread into the private sector, with many businesses now taking active steps to address and to get people vaccinated, including vaccine mandates that suggest that in order for you to continue employment in these places, you're required to get a vaccine. And of course, it has raised the question specifically on the role of immunity and, you know, natural immunity when it comes to fighting COVID-19. And it's become quite a debate. If you follow my Facebook page, Tori Snow, WBAL, I shared an article about someone that is bringing a lawsuit against George Mason University for this very thing. Now, a lot of people have been asking questions. What about natural immunity? What role is it playing in the pandemic? And I reached out trying to get a little more information and found a man by the name of Paul Seeger. He's a managing partner at PCS Advisors. And I spoke with Paul to get a little bit of information. He's quite outspoken on a topic. I invited him to join us on the program. Paul, I want to thank you so much for joining our program. And, you know, uh, you know your, your company, your firm, your experience engages a lot when it comes to employers and their health care decisions. You know, from your perspective... When companies impose these vaccine mandates on their employers and the people want to push back because of other factors, what is what is your response in those circumstances and and how do you feel companies are handling this? Well, there certainly is a growing trend. Unfortunately, it seems only to be informed by this mainstream media narrative and narrative that's pushed by politicians at really high levels, like the soundbite that you just had from your governor. And it completely ignores the fact that there is broad durable immunity that folks can get. In fact, it's broader. Studies are showing that it is uh, a better form of immunity in some ways in terms of protecting you against these various variants. And when you make these mandates and you don't acknowledge that that national immunity exists, we're not having a complete scientific conversation around it. And we're making some very big decisions that that don't include that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting you bring that up because a lot of people, are, don't, they, they just don't understand the role that natural immunity, they're, like you said, there is a bit of an assumption, well, natural immunity should just be completely discounted. What are some of the studies and information and data that you have found in your own research that makes you feel like we ought to pay more closer attention to natural immunity? Every study very recently, I think as recently as last week, Emory University put one out. There's been quite a few. And they all have confirmed, going back all the way back to Italy and some of the earliest hardest hit areas, that when you get COVID and recover, you get antibodies and you get immunity, uh, and it's long lasting. In fact, it's now been shown, this recent study that I just referenced, showed that the immunity or protection from severe illness that you get from the most commonly used vaccines today in our country wanes over time. It's at a six month point, it's reduced by about 10%. And in the same study, they didn't see that happening for those who actually caught and recovered from COVID. So uh, it's a it's a very strong thing, and we need to include it in the conversation. We're speaking with Paul Siegert, who's a managing partner at PCS Advisors, is a company that focuses on engaging employers with their health care. Um, you know, in your field and in your discipline, we are seeing more and more companies that are taking this very aggressive vac- mandatory vaccine process. What are your thoughts on how people should respond or if there's any leverage for them to push back if they feel like this is not the right move for them? Well, the what we see in most of these mandates is that there are uh, other options for those employees. Many times it includes submitting to weekly testing. And I think the goal there is to just basically make it inconvenient enough that they give in uh, and get vaccinated. Uh, so they do have an option, don't work there, submit to the testing, but it has been pretty well established by employment law attorneys and that uh, they can't, the mandates can be done. The employers can make the mandates. We advise employers to consider the full scientific information that's available and consider doing what, like what they're doing in the UK where they actually test their population for antibodies versus rely only on the percentages of population that are vaccinated is that that is the only path to herd immunity because it is not. I don't usually, uh, you know, I don't want to put you in a corner here, but I am curious to get your thoughts on why you feel that the narrative has developed the way that it was. I mean, truly scientific individuals would be curious. They would want to understand what's going on with natural immunity. Why do you feel that that is such a hard thing to get from a mainstream discussion about COVID? 
Well, unfortunately, we have, when you've been in healthcare and looking at the payment model that we have and, and working to improve it, uh, for as long as I have, you get a little bit jaded and you always have to follow the money that's involved. I mean, we've, we've made billionaires with this, with these vaccines. I'm not against that and I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Uh, the, but there's a lot of financial pressure in our system to get these vaccines in people's arms and in this, in this model that we have. So that, I believe drive the fact that we have this fifth of our economy that essentially self-regulates through the power of uh, virtually unlimited lobbying dollars. I think that contributes to the situation we're in. You go across the pond to the UK, they went out and randomly tested their population for antibodies a week or so ago and found out that 92% of their population had some protections and antibodies against serious illness from COVID, which is far below the vaccinated percentage of the population. And the Delta variant rose and fell rather quickly, as you would expect if you had that level of herd immunity. And that's something we need to talk more about, uh, despite the financial pressure to sell all of these vaccines. Paul Seeger, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join our program. Thank you for your insights. Please be safe and have a fantastic afternoon. Thanks for having me. No problem. And that was Paul Seeger. He's a managing partner at PCS Advisors. I, I saw him pop up in a few articles as I was researching this topic of natural immunity.